let's get to the nitty gritty here. Still a category five hurricane. You need to take this seriously and you need to get out. It is my responsibility to empower my audience to know more about climate change in a way that people not only understand it, but accept it from a trustworthy source. The hottest day so This great big story was made possible by the all-electric Jaguar I-PACE. Hi, good afternoon to both of you. So there's the hurricane now, 185 miles per hour. John Morales has been forecasting the weather in Miami for nearly 30 years. He's gained a loyal following for his straightforward reporting, especially in times of crisis. And he's using his position to educate his audience on an important issue, climate change. He started his journey as a weatherman when he was just a boy. I grew up in Puerto Rico, and therefore I'm a tropical cyclone and hurricane uh, aficionado. Back in those days, I would keep statistics on every single hurricane. In 1991, John began forecasting for Spanish language news channels in Miami before moving to NBC in 2009. And so he is very familiar with the specific threats to this region in the face of climate change. For South Florida in particular, climate change is an immense threat. Sea level rise, stronger hurricanes, freshwater flooding, heat index values often exceeding 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Through his work, John also makes it clear that this region could serve as a warning for what other parts of the world may face in the near future. Yesterday at the White House, the president and vice president met with weather forecasters from around the country to discuss global climate change. Back in the 1990s, the awareness around climate change was starting to grow. However, John noticed that most weather forecasters were not talking about the issue. TV weather consultants do not want us to talk science on air. They think that you don't understand those things. There have been some significant challenges in terms of broadcast meteorologists becoming climate communicators. Some alarming numbers had come up regarding the skepticism amongst my community. Many uh, broadcast meteorologists were not even accepting of the state of the science of climate change. Out of the six record warm temperatures that were in jeopardy today, we hit four. I felt that I had the gravitas to be able to get on air without asking permission and start discussing and communicating climate. Today, the science of climate change has become widely accepted amongst broadcast meteorologists. And just in time, too, as extreme weather has become more frequent in the past decade. One such weather event, Hurricane Maria, led to the moment John considers the most difficult in his career, as the storm bore down on his home island of Puerto Rico. I did a Facebook Live from an empty conference room, and the message was, sometimes the worst does happen. I urge people to be mentally strong. I ask them to uh, stay safe inside, but be ready for a long aftermath. Prepárense mentalmente, porque van a ser unas horas bien largas y bien difíciles. It got shared, it got viewed about a million times. Emotionally, it was very difficult to forecast what I knew was going to be just a horrific natural disaster. And so for John, the responsibility of being a meteorologist weighs on him especially in times of extreme weather. Broadcast meteorologists are entering these folks' households, or perhaps these days entering their smartphones, to provide a weather forecast on a daily basis, and they've come to trust us. It is our responsibility to communicate on climate change and stand up in defense of science. That's what I want to continue doing heading forward. Highs in the mid-70s, it should be quite the beautiful weekend in South Florida.